But the videos are now up on YouTube. And so if you want to watch those, please feel free to go back and watch those. No, I, I'm lazy. I'm getting lazier as we go on. Have you noticed? <laughs> Uh, so what I do is I just post them on YouTube and don't tell you. <laughs> I got to tell you what's nuts. It's funny that you mentioned this because I have just committed my pet peeve when it comes to programming. So I, I was working on this project and it was very difficult and, I, I, and it was pretty much a debugging project. So I debugged it and I was pretty proud of myself. And I got up on the web and, and the client uh, kept screaming, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I said, it's there, we fixed it, it's running. I mean, I've done my part. I, you know, when I do my part, I want to run away. So, uh, uh, next thing I know is they're really screaming louder. And, you know, it's like, f so it's about 16 names in the email, and it's the end of the day. And I said, well, you know, where are you looking at? And I said, well, we're looking at this number here. So, this is supposed to be populating a certain number. So, did you ever tell anyone that's where it's supposed to go? <laughs> and they said, no. And I said, well, how are we supposed to know? <laughs> So, you know, it's like I was promoted to the level of omnipotence. So there you go. You've been promoted to omnipotence. <laughs> You're just supposed to know I posted them on YouTube. But, but what I have, I've actually uh, created a playlist in my YouTube, too. This It's this intro to Java. And can you see the intro to Java? Is it there? And there it is. It's, uh, let me, as a matter of fact, let me go there as well. So that people on, w watching this on YouTube will know that on YouTube all the videos are there. And I have playlists now. Ta -da! Someone is yelling at me. He says, where's your playlist? If you, you'd get more pe views if you had playlists. And I've been actually doing playlists for years, but I, I didn't realize that I had not activated it. Because <laughs> I never go to my own, I never go to my own uh, site. I, I just go and upload. Enter to Java programming. That should be it. Let's click on that. There we go. Java, Java uh, 25 adding button is what it is. Can you see my screen? At the very bottom. That was the last one, I believe. Okay, so we're back, uh, and what I want to do now is that you've seen how the action listener works. I want to go ahead and take a look at the tic-tac-toe game. I'm going to go ahead and do a clip, and we're just going to go step through it. You've, you've got it already, so you understand how the game works. But I just want to get it on the, uh, on the tutorial so everyone listening can see it as well. And so this is a tic-tac-toe game that I've pulled off the web, and you know, I, I've probably seen three or four sites of different people who have used this code, and so I don't really know who to contribute it to. Let me see if he put his name at the top. Maybe he did, and I can tell you who did it. So I don't see the author's name in there, and I, I'm like this too. I, I, I throw code out there, I don't put my name on it, and I should. And uh, so someone did it, and I've seen it like five different sites and five different people claiming that they wrote it, so I'm not really sure who wrote it now. And that's so typical of the web, you know. So uh, what I do is if I know who's written something, I've always tried to give them, I always try to give them, uh, you know, um, say they wrote it, give them credit for it. I try not to use, take credit for other people's work. And uh, so anyway, it, let's just walk through the game and it's just very simple. But it uses a twist. It's something a little bit different than what we've seen before. And uh, basically uh, what we're doing here is we're um, using the typical classes that we bring in the OT class, the swing class, the event class. And he's using the wild cards here so he's just bringing everything in. Which is a small program, doesn't make much of a difference. Now, as opposed to using extends JFrame, he's going to use uh, implements action listener. So, the philosophy here is he's going to go ahead and incorporate the action listener up front because he's going to use it a lot. And so, as opposed to extending JFrame, he's just going to go ahead and create a JFrame. And so, that's what he does. Now, the other way to do this would be just as we just seen before, we could, imp we could extend JFrame, right? and then created a separate class for action listener and just attached it to all the buttons. But uh, this is just a different way of doing it. So I, I'm glad we have this game so you can see this. And then we're going to look at a lot of other games and you're going to become very familiar with how action listeners work. Very important that you learn how to use this. And so once he does that, he's declared his JFrame, he's put his title in there and he's going to declare all his buttons as you said before. Button 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, where there are 9 buttons. And once he's done that, he's going to create a constructor class. So he's got to declare all those. They're all private, which is fine. He also has a integer for count and an integer or a boolean for win or for win. So you need to know if you won the game or not. And you need to have the count to know wait, what uh what am I on? Odd or even? Should I have an X or a zero, for example? So uh you're gonna start by creating a constructor function called tic tac toe, because that was the name of your class, my tic tac toe. And then he declared his JFrame, and the name of his JFrame is window, so he can set the size of his JFrame, set the default close, as you've seen before, and set the window layout, and he's going to create a grid of 3x3. Three three. 
And so let me go and run the program real quick here, and you can see the 3x3. Three three. And here is right here. Notice going up at the side, so I'd actually like to add some code to this next time to center this. You, wouldn't, you actually want to center it so you can play. So you can see he's got a 3x3 three three right here, which is poor cool. And what's interesting is I stretch these. These are also moving with the window, which is really cool. The way this game works, too, you know, the first one is what X and the second one is 0. And you can always win, you know, if you just go ahead and just put the zero somewhere else. But, so the idea here is there no, there's no artificial intelligence here. This is basically is you're playing against someone on your machine. You could make it uh, a shared object and sh send it across the web, and, and, and you could play with someone across the web. But we won't get to that today. Okay, and I'm done, I'm done with this, so I'm just going to hit OK. And that's the game. So now that the buttons, the buttons are set in a grid. And so what I now, excuse me, my uh, J frame is a grid, and now I'm going to add a button to my J grid. I'm going to add the buttons to my J frame, which is the window. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it lines them up, okay? Because I, I got the text layout there, and it's going to line them up. One, two, three at the top, four, five, six, the middle, and uh, seven, eight, nine, the lower. There we go. And now what I need to do is I need to add action listeners to every single button because when I click on them, I, something needs to happen. And the way I do that is to use the this word which is new to you right you've seen it in PHP but it's new for Java and what the this is going to do is refer to that one method remember in the action listener that needs to be written and that one method that needs to be rewritten is called the action perform that's a specific name you'll always see it when you're working with action listeners action perform and when we did the simple button if you go back to the simple button I, I create it you're going to see that I had to come along here declare the action listener that method and what was the name of it action perform see that same name so that's what keys you in with the this uh, word so that was a little bit complicated but it was an easy way to implement it it actually saved him you know adding another nine lines of code and then what you're going to do is set the window and set the window to what true there you go you're done and so all these buttons will appear and now is all the logic the control logic that goes along with the tic-tac-toe game so whenever I click on a button any button because it uses this keyword this script will be run and each time I click on a button it's going to implement the count and the reason the count is so important because if the count is even I'll get a what zero and if it's odd I'll get a yeah one three five seven nine give me an X and two four six eight and ten give me a zero now of course you start with one because as soon as you run the method it increments it, remember count was originally zero as soon as you run the button you got plus plus at the beginning so it's one so you start with a with an odd count and then one two three four five six seven eight nine as it implements so that tells my screen hey do I put an X or yeah yeah anything you could put event it doesn't matter absolutely yeah, and if I do a control F on A, for example, and I go to the next find, let's go. That wasn't a good one. You can see, let me go here. Let me go. There's my A's right there. You see that? And it's saying get source is if it's equal to button one, if it's equal to button two, if it's equal to button three. You see that? So, so, so along with that action, what is that action is actually doing? That it is actually sending an array. And in that array, there's several like uh, things you can grab. And this particular one is get source, and that's basically what did I click on? Well, I clicked on button one, or I clicked on button two, or I clicked on button three. You see that? I could have changed A to event, or I could have changed A to bananas. Or I'm just setting that because it knows that it's going to be an action event, and with that action event, it's going to send kind of a kind of array of events that you can choose from. All right. In this particular case, we want to choose from get source, or what what did I click on? So this is actually going to set the letter that I click on right here. Pretty cool. And then uh, I guess I have the big question here is where does letter come from? Let me copy that. I like to go up to the top here. And we can see that we have a string here called letter. You see that? Well, that doesn't do anything for me. What, what, where is letter going? And so I'm going to hit my control F just to put letter right here. You know, and just search around the program. Now, I'm doing this for a small program, but for large programs, you can see what happens here. I can already see lower down here. Uh, depending on what button I click on, it's going to set the text of that button to letter. 
Okay? So basically the event says, hey, I fired an event. I want to, and it's going to be A, and in that A, I want to see if it's button 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and if it is, I'm going to set the text of that button equal to letter, which is X or 0. That's how that control work logic works. And so all the way through, there are all nine buttons, depending on one, which one you click on. It will set, and then once it does that, it will disable the button to false. So once it disables the button, or set enable to false, you can't click on it again. So you won't be able to change anything concerning it. So that's how it's canceling out the buttons that you might go to next.